All right, here we go. Lightroom 4, tethered photography setup and shooting, editing and saving. Exporting is equivalent to saving. All right, first thing you want to do is after you have your computer linked up with your camera, is you want to make sure your camera is on. And then you want to go to File. Tethered Capture, Start Tethered Capture. Name it, which I already did right here, and click OK. Now right there it's going to say no camera detected until it all gets in sync. Now it's in sync. Now what this button does is give you a remote firing option. And then the image will appear down here. And we're not going to use that image, so I'm going to delete it. <clears throat> but that's just to show you the system works. So now we're going to get down to what we're shooting. These are the settings that's on my camera. Shutter speed is 125, f-stop 7.1. My film speed equivalent is 400. My white balance is automatic. Okay, so here we go. We're going to shoot two watches, a charm, and a cuff. Now that I've taken a picture, the image will appear down here. Now you see all this activity in the background, got an ink, but we're not going to worry about that. We're going to look at this necklace, my, the Eye of Haru. First thing I want to do, I want to brighten that up. So I'm going to go over here to my adjustment brush tool, as you see lit up on the right hand side. And I'm going to make this, the brush a little bit smaller so I can get into the details of my necklace. Just brighten it up. Just brighten it up. Come all around and brighten it up. You could do the same thing, you could also darken objects too. Just brighten this whole area up right there. Clean it up. Click done when finished. Now the next thing I want to do, because I shot in RAW, you see my camera calibration. So my profile will match what my camera saw. Next thing I want to do is do a little big vignetting. And that's going to create that shadow and the circular motion around my image. Right around, it just darkened the edges a little bit. <clears throat> Next thing I want to do is sharpen it a little bit. You see this area right here, that's showing the detail of the watch. See, that's the knob right there. So you can increase that, increase the radius and the detail. Even though it looks a little grainy there, here it's good. So when it's that big, now we can just bring it down and soften it up a little bit. Come back over here, click in, it'll go back. Split toning. You could do that if you want to mess with your hues. Now to save time so I don't spend a lot of time in this. I'm going to go to the effects. Focus right in on that. Then come over here to my preset.
Now what I want to do right here is darken this area right there. Just a little bit. I want to keep it natural. Give it a natural look. I just want to click right in there after I get the uh, brush size equal to the area that I want to work in. So that should work. After I click in, just come over here to my exposure setting and watch how it transitions down. Make my shadows a little darker. Just click right on that spot right there. And let's get a little clarity and a little sharpness. Now what I want to do is lighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to increase the wipes in my highlights. And right here, I want to lighten that up a little bit. So I'm going to come back to my brush tool and click in the areas I want to work in. So one other thing we can do here is the gradient tool. The gradient filter right here. Click that. Bring it up. And let's darken it a little bit. It's easier. To, you can keep going without clicking in and out. But the way I want to do it is to, so it won't take time rendering. And what I'm about to do here is get that ink pen and that paper clip. into the shadows, have a hard shadow on them. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. And this little area right here, this will be my spot removal. In Photoshop, it's equivalent to the uh, content aware. It's just doing its own thing here. You just have to trade places. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing over here with this ink pen.
And now that we did all that, we're going to do a little crop, which is right here. Push this up. And we'll export it. Export. Call this OGB Tether. And save it here. Tether, the JPEG, but you can't put it in Facebook as a TIFF. After it finishes, It means it's saving to my hard drive and my pictures folder. And I'm going to stop the tether and turn my camera off. Now when shooting with the tether, you got to take your CF card out or your SD card, whatever type of camera you're using, and it'll go from there directly into the program that you're using be it Lightroom, Aperture, or the new one that I discovered today, Capture One. That ding means we are done. Here's your before and after. Let's make it a little bigger. So you can see the details. And if you don't, if you see something else you want to take out, you can always work with it in there. So if you want to take out these spots, just click and go. And with those spots, there's something on the desk. I should have cleared it out first. And there's a little black spot on my piece of jewelry. So you can just make it small and go and get it. And then click done. And there's your before and after. There you have it. previous that means I want to change my I want to save the changes that I just made and overwrite it so this wasn't a perfect uh, example so far as the quality of the finished product but it's just to show you the steps that you have to take to actually shoot from the camera directly into your computer and edit as you go along